cruelty, brutality, depravity, they're as old as humankind, but we seem to keep finding new ways to use them against the most innocent and the most helpless among us. People like Corey Michelow. Corey should be eight, but he died two years ago in a New Jersey hospital at the young age of six. His father, Christopher Gregor, said the little boy woke up sick from a nap, and that was that. The investigation showed that father was seen with Corey at a New Jersey gym just days before the child died. Allegedly, he was forcing his son to run at higher and higher rates of speed, even as the child repeatedly fell off that treadmill. Again, the child was just six. And the reason the child was being forced to run? A caseworker reported that the little boy said, Dad thought he was too fat. That father is now on trial charged with murder and child endangerment. And that treadmill video was just played in court. Little Corey's mother was also in court and watching as that evidence played on the screen. There is no sound on it, but you will see and hear Brianna Michelow's reaction. An autopsy found that Corey died of blunt force trauma, contusions to his liver and heart, and sepsis, or blood infection. Later, an outside pathologist hired by the state found evidence of chronic abuse, including an injury to Corey's heart, hours before he died. In court, an emergency room nurse testified that while doctors were scrambling to save Corey's life, his father just walked out of the ER leaving his son to die there, surrounded by strangers. You can actually even watch as that father is walking away from the hospital altogether. In parking lot footage, this is less than 20 minutes after Corey was pronounced dead. I am joined now by Nima Romani. He is a former federal prosecutor and he's president of the West Coast Trial Lawyers. Nima, I don't even know where to begin. I, I, don't, I don't know how any jury can watch what I just, well, I don't even feel like I need a case. What I just saw alone in that gym, how do you get past that? How, has he, how could he possibly have any defense? Ashley, this case is indefensible, and you're absolutely right. Just watching that video alone, no juror is going to acquit in this case. I expect a verdict in a matter of minutes, probably less than an hour. And like you said, watching the video today, you see the ER nurse testifying that Christopher just walked out, turned his phone off on airplane mode. And you know what the last thing he was doing? Texting a girl that he found on a dating app. I mean, just horrific stuff here. And there's a special place in hell for people like Christopher Gregor. Is there ever, you know, his lawyer said to the jury, and I think he had to say this to the jury, you're not going to like my client. If I had a dime for every time a defense attorney had to open a case with you're not going to like my client. Boy, understatement in this one. But this defendant decided to use a defense that the boy died of natural causes and then also tried to flip the script and make the mom look bad, um, suggested that once she was on drugs and therefore she's got to have some, some fault in that. Is that the kind of thing that makes a jury more angry than give them reasonable doubt? No question. I mean, the defense is absolutely ridiculous. In their opening statement, they said that Corey died because of an injury related to football and complicated with pneumonia. And let's not forget, Christopher was only involved in Corey's life for about a year. Uh, there was a paternity test that was done when Corey was four, and really Christopher got involved at age five. So within the span of a year, he was abusing Corey. And we're talking about contusions to the liver, to the heart, and everything that you discussed. And on top of that, there's that terrible internet search history. How long after an autopsy do prosecutors file murder charges? I mean, really terrible stuff. So there's no defense in this case. It's going to be a quick, guilty verdict. 
frankly, Christopher should have accepted that very generous 30-year offer that prosecutors put on the table. Now he's going to get life. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, I can't imagine turning down a 30-year plea deal at this point um, because this is murder, and it does mean life, no parole, potentially, if he gets the worst of it. Nima Romani, great to have you. Thank you for this. Well, thanks for having me, Ashley.